today. If you hear the rejoice in the Lord, give the Lord a hand praise right now. Not for what he's done, but what he's already doing in our lives. We're just so grateful today. We welcome you here to the Union Church. Our pastor is the one and only, Dr. Charles C. Martin Sr. And we're just glad to be here today. Right now, this is our youth Sunday, and we're going to have our young people come up. We're going to have one come up with the scripture, and another one with a prayer. Say amen as they come. Amen. Morning, Union. It is. Today I'll be reading scripture from Ephesians six ten through eighteen. Oh wait, sorry. Chose. Oh wait, no. Wait. Finally, be strong in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in in the evil day and have done all to stand firm stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace in all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. Good morning, Union. Today, I'll be doing the Lord's Prayer. May you please bow your head and close your eyes. Our Father, who joined in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as you forgive our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, for deliver us from evil, for thine kingdom, power, and glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's stand for our praise and worship period. Let's stay standing. Amen. Give our youth a hand.
everybody. Glory. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. We're here today to praise. So I'm here today on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Charles C. Martin, all our other ministers, the Union Church family, our dynamic choir. We're just so happy to be here today. And we want to welcome anybody to stand that has not been here before. We're going to welcome everybody in Facebook land that's Facebooking for the first time to say, I'm number one. We want you to know that you are welcome. And if you're at home watching Facebook, we want you to come join us in the sanctuary because praises together is what make us strong. So we want you to know that you are welcome, welcome, welcome. Why don't you go out your way and greet somebody in the spirit of holiness. Go greet your neighbor.
Test it one, two. Y'all all right? Mic check, mic check. Hey man, raise those levels up for me, please.
no way. There ain't no way. My, 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 my. Thank you, Lord. I hope you got a hope you got a worship in you today. What does staple singer say? Let me take you there. <laughs> My God. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is good to be here today. It's good to see you here today. I pray that you've come to worship the Lord and to worship him in spirit and in truth. Our Facebook family and friends, we greet you. And we thank you all for being a part of our worship on today. Uh, we are changing up as you uh, know our time schedule and so it's time for the word now and uh, so we're getting ready to get into the word so if you have your Bibles you get them and stand with us as we get ready to get into the word of God for today this is the series of take it back and uh, so today we're going to deal with another area that the Lord impressed upon me and this this series is growing I thought it was going to be maybe four or five Sundays, but each week God keeps adding another to it, and so I'm just going to give you what he gave to me, and uh, one of the things that uh, we discussed uh, before uh, in the class with pastors, I've been in a conference this week, and one gentleman asked, how do you take time to study the word for yourself and to feed the people, and uh, I remembered that... Uh, when our children were small and they were eating their food, when they were transitioning to stronger food, then what we had to do was eat it first, chew it up, and then feed it to them. So, so I'm going to let you all know, I've chewed this up, <laughs> I've tasted it, and so I'm going to give it to you so that hopefully you get the nutrients and nourishment from it. Uh, that I got. So I don't preach something to you that I haven't had the opportunity to taste for myself and examine myself with also. Father, we come to your name of Jesus and we thank you for this privilege, this opportunity to share with the saints, your people, your children, to open up the eyes of unbelievers, to bring home those who have strayed away. And we believe that today you're going to speak to us through your word by the power of your Holy Spirit, help me that I may be your mouthpiece. Holy Spirit, speak to me and through me that your people will hear your word in my words. Say today, heal today, restore today, mend broken hearts. Renew, revive, restore us afresh. Now God, give us today a fresh anointing. Fill us afresh today. Some of us have been uh, tied up in so much this week. We just need you. Speak to our hearts and be glorified in us today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, turn with us in your Bibles to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation. Uh, praying for Revelation today. Uh, the book of Revelation. It's good to see all of you here. Revelation chapter 2, uh, you'll find Revelation at the end of the book, amen, Revelation chapter 2, those of you Bible readers uh, are familiar who have read the book of Revelation, haven't run from it, the scripture even tells you that you're blessed if you read it, uh, so if you haven't read Revelation, read it, you know, uh, don't read it to interpret it, read it to see what it says, and uh, you'll be blessed by just reading and getting what it says. Revelation chapter 2 is where we're going to be. If you have it, say amen. 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 Great. Take your Bible. Lift up. Say with me, this is my Bible. Is my Bible. It is the inspired Word of God. Word of God. I, believe I believe what it says. I believe I am who it says I am. I believe I have what it says I have. I believe I can do what it says I can do. I'm ready to receive the Word of God. I'm ready to change. I'm ready to be transformed by the renewing of my thinking that I may know what is God's good and perfect will 
for my life. I'm ready, Lord, to receive a word from the word of my God. Revelation chapter 2, and I'm going to read it from King James. It says in verse 1, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and has found them liars, and has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. Amen. Grab somebody by the hand or look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, today, by the power of God and with the help of the Holy Ghost, the pastor's going to talk about, take your love back. Some of us grew up listening to all kind of music and one of the artists that came along with us early on was Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson had a song, When I Had You To Myself, I Didn't Want You Around. Those pretty faces always made you stand out in a crowd. But as he went through the song unfolding this whole scenario, scenario, he came to his chorus and said, Oh, baby, give me one more chance (laughs) to show you that I love you. Won't you please let me back in your heart? Oh, darling, I was blind to let you go. So we might change the words and say, Oh, Jesus. Give me one more chance to show you that I love you. Won't you please let me back in your heart? Oh, Jesus, I was blind to let you go. This passage kind of takes off on an idea like that because the church of Ephesus was a powerful church. I don't have time to unfold the the historical setting behind the book of Revelations, but if you read it, you'll begin to understand that there's seven letters written to seven churches, and there's each one of those churches, there's something that the Lord Jesus is saying through Revelation as he gives it to John on the Isle of Patmos, and John writes these letters to the seven churches. Ephesus was a powerful church. Uh, When you read the book of Ephesians, uh, you find out a lot that was said to the church at Ephesus. And they were the ones who, who uh, heard so much from Paul that Paul embraced them, he grew them, he taught them more about living their lives in their relationship with God. And he dealt with that as we see it in the book of uh, Ephesians. So here we come now to a letter written by John from the Isle of Patmos to the church at Ephesus, and he writes them to tell them what the Spirit of God has said to him. So he begins by saying to them uh, that I know your works. The church at Ephesus did a lot of things. They, They were a strong church. They were a ministering church. They were a caring church, ecclesia body that was called out. And he says in verse 2, he says, I know your works and your labor and your patience, and how you can't bear them that are evil. You tried those which say that they are apostles, and you have proven that they're not, and you found them to be liars. So so he begins by uh, blessing them, actually, by telling them what great things they have done. 
Uh, he knows the labor. He knows that. So just for a moment, I want to kind of explain that portion so we can get to the meat of the matter. He says, I know your works. Uh, your, your works are the things that they have undertaken to do uh, to advance the kingdom. They're, they have undertaken certain uh, roles, certain responsibilities, certain duties, certain things that they did in their culture, in their context, and in their community. I know what you have undertaken. I know what you've been doing. And uh, not only do I know your work, I know your labor. Now, the word labor comes from a Greek word that means or, or that talks about the trouble, the grief, even the sorrow, the stuff that you had to go through in order to do what I've called you to do or do what you've been assigned to do. So not only do I know what you've been doing, I know that it wasn't easy. I know it was rough. I know it was difficult. I know you, you lost some friends. You lost some acquaintances. You lost some loved ones. It was uh, some persecution you encountered or endured. I, I know what you've done, and I know that what you did wasn't easy to do. And so, you know, same thing for us as believers. The Lord says, I know the things that you've done. I know that you have sacrificed. I know you've done some things, and I know that it's been hard. I know you've been through some stuff. I know you lost some friends along the way who turned their backs on you. I know you, you made some enemies along the way. So I know your work and the labor, the grief, the sorrow. You know, sometimes it's just good to know that the Lord does know. So sometimes we feel like he must not know what I'm going through. But it's good to know that, that he knows what you're dealing with. I just feel like I need to stay right there for just a moment. I don't know, somebody is dealing with something and, and the burden on you is so heavy that you're feeling like you're there by yourself. But I just want to let you know, you ain't there by yourself. Uh, he knows the weight on your shoulders. He knows the pain in your heart. He knows the betrayal and the betrayers. He, he knows the sorrow. He knows what you've done for him, and he knows the labor, the work, the sorrow you've gone through in order to do it. But then he goes on to say, not only do I, do, do, do I know this, but you have borne, you have patience, you have, have carried this, and you've had patience, endurance to deal with those who um, are anti, those who are not cooperative. Uh, those who are not working with you. You know, sometimes it's, it's hard doing the work of ministry uh, because everybody don't keep their word. <laughs> and and so, so patience is necessary. So, sometimes patience is necessary. Sometimes y'all got to be patient with me because uh, I get calls, I get messages and stuff like that, and people want me to turn the message, but, but I'm not just sitting at home waiting on a text. You know, and, and sometimes I'm in conferences, I'm in meetings, I'm across town, I'm driving, stuff like that. And so, you know, sometimes I, I got to be patient uh, with people. And I got people to be patient with me uh, because, you know, as, as, you know, as efficient as I am, I mess up. I know that's a shock to all of you up in here that, that you didn't, didn't think that that was possible. But, but the, the patience, the one, you have been un unwavering in what you're doing. You have stood the test and then, then you have come to the place that you just couldn't bear with phoniness. Just, just can't deal with folk who say that they are and they've proven themselves to be lying. Uh, he, he says, I, you, you've dealt with some of them and, and I know your works, I know your labor, but I know you've been patient and you've been patiently dealing with some of those who are, are lies and, and, and even those uh, who are evil, those who are of a bad nature, and you already know from the get what their intention is. But then he goes on to say, you've tried, you have tested, you have watched some folk to see how they're going to conduct themselves before you put your trust in them. And he's commending them for all of this, that they have done the right things that, that the church should be doing. You know, you don't just get somebody and put them in leadership in the church just because they can come in and say King James Version. You know, you, you can't. The scripture says, lay hands suddenly on no man and neither be a partaker in any man's sin. So, so you, you got to try some 
people. Sometimes, sometimes you, you, you have to give a person a little bit of information on something that's really not that significant to see if they're going to run and tell somebody else. Okay, let me move on. You tried them. Then you, you labored. You, 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 you got weary with them, but you, you hung in there with them. You, you labored with them, and then you, you didn't give up. You didn't give up. He says, you've done a lot of good things. And, and union, uh, saints of God who are here and listening and watching, you've done a lot for God. You, you've served him. You, have, uh, you make it to various meetings, rehearsals, and commitments, and doing this, that, and the other, and all that kind of stuff. And, and so the Lord is pleased with what you've done. But just like the church here in Ephesus, John says, what you've done is great. But Jesus says, I got an issue with you. And, and he says that my issue is you left your first love. And when I looked at that, I was like, I need, I need more. I had questions. I, I, I've dealt with this passage before. I've looked at the passage before, but, but I had an itch that I couldn't scratch. I, had, I needed some insight. I need the Spirit of God to show me something that perhaps I was missing, maybe you already had the revelation, maybe I was missing it, and I wanted to, to see what that was. And, and so as I dug into it, it said, you left your first love, your first love, your first love. Not you left the one you first loved. In other words, you left the one who loved you first. See, that's, that's different when we think about it because, because if we're thinking about the one that we loved, that's, that's a different approach. But, but when the Spirit was saying that what, what, what John was trying to get them to see was the one who loved them first before they even loved themselves. You know the Scripture that God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died he commended his love where toward us see the truth of the matter is there are not very many people who came to Jesus because they loved him many people came to Jesus to get rescued get out of trouble, escape this, get out from under guilt, or to have him to get you out of a bind. You don't have to say amen, but I know I'm right. We, by and large, didn't come to him because we loved him already. Most of us are even still growing and learning how to love him. And there's still some saints who are really not that secure in their love. And here's, here's what the Spirit was saying to me. There are many people who think they love Him, think they love the Lord Jesus, but what they really love is the idea of Him. <sighs> this, this, this is heavy, y'all. They, they love the idea of Him. Listen, here, here it is. It's the idea that there's somebody who overlooks your faults. That, I mean, that, that'll make you feel pretty good. The, the idea that here's somebody who forgives you. The, the idea that he does that. And so oftentimes, I, I think that's why sometimes the praise and worship of people is not really getting through because you're praising the idea. Oh, my, 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 my. Yeah, yeah, we love the idea of a, a God who watches over us, the idea that he supplies all of our needs according to his riches. and We love the idea of that kind of deity that's on our side, but he said the issue is you left your first love. Thank you for your ideas, your ideologies, your, your concepts, all of that's great. But, but God is not some idea. Oh, 
Jesus was not just an idea that somebody could pick up and, and run with. And so people have a tendency when it comes to worshiping him to only get to the door, but they can't get through the door because they're stuck at the idea that God is going to make a way. God is going to fix this. God is going to do that. And so we like the idea of what he does. So we're so caught up in the idea that we miss him. Whoo, Lord, I could sit out right there. Because you know, I, I, I wonder, I wonder if we examine ourselves and we do an autopsy on our worship, is our worship more about the idea that he does this? Is our worship more about this fantasy of this God that we created who's always there to help us? See, what we think is, if, if we talk about how much we love him, that that's the issue. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. But we don't talk about how much he loves us. Yes, I, I know you love him. I know you do. I, I, I really believe that you do. But, but, but sometimes, stop talking about how much you love him and check out how much he loves you. That, that's why he said, I got something against you because you've been doing a lot of stuff trying to show people how much you love me, but you have left me. You, 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 you're trying to show people because you're paying your tithe. You're trying to show people because you're showing up. You're trying to show people because of this, that, and the other. He says, that's good. I appreciate that. But it's not how much you demonstrate your love toward me. It's how much I demonstrated my love toward you. It's, it's time for the saints to get our love back. Because it's been misdirected, it's, it's been shifted into areas, it's been shifted in the realm. Unless, unless you think that I'm, I'm, I'm making it up, John 15, 16 through 19 says this, You have not chosen me, but I chose you. Oh my God, can you, can you, can that, can you really grasp that? That the sovereign creator of the universe chose you. You see, see, I can't get caught up in how much I love him. I get caught up in trying to figure out why he loved me. Me, this, this clay vessel, this person who's prone to wonder, prone to mess up, prone to not obey, prone to go the wrong direction, and yet, yet he loves me, yet, yet, yet he loves, let me change it and make it to you, yet he loves you. When you just lied yesterday, when you, when, when you were deserving of being wiped out, obliterated, and, 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 and on death row, when you were there, and yet, behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the sons of God. That's awesome that God calls you his children. There's some of y'all don't even want to claim your own. <laughs> they start acting, hey, ain't my child. I, I don't know who child that is. And, and, and yet God could do the same thing when he looks at us, but, but, but he so loved the world that he, he gave his son so that all of us Whosoever's that believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. He didn't give us a spirit of bondage. He gave us a spirit of adoption so we could call him daddy. Oh, oh my God. I, I'm just, I'm trying to get through this. It's hard to, to move on through this because as I was chewing this meat up, 
I started thinking about how he loved me in my sin. Now, not, and I'm not just talking about doing sin. I'm just talking about the fact that I was born a sinner. And, 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 and not only did he love me being born a sinner, he loved me in my rebellion. Oh, maybe some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe, maybe you were good. Maybe you were one of them nice little kids that didn't rebel against God. But I rebelled. And when I say rebel, I wasn't going and fighting and marching against him. I just didn't do what he said. I did it my way. I hated who I wanted to hate. I lied when I wanted to lie. Cheated when I wanted to cheat. I know that ain't none of y'all because y'all nice and obedient and everything that you've done. I'm just talking about me. I know I was jacked up from the flow of, I know when my thoughts were not his stuff, I know when I lusted, I know when I hated, I know, and yet in the midst of all of that, he still, st still, still loved me. How dare I walk away from the one who loved me? Oh my God, help me, help me, help me, help me. Listen, listen, because here's what the scripture says. When you're dealing with stuff and coming against you, what can separate us from, from, from the love of God? Not, tribulation, distress, peril, nakedness, famine, so none of these, Romans 8, 37 says no. And all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that what? Love us. We, see, we are conquerors because he loved us. You're not a conqueror because you went through it. You are a conqueror because he loved you. You don't get the victory just because you endured. You get the victory because he loved you and you did endure. You were able to endure because when you grabbed hold of him in your heart, your spirit was saying, ain't nothing that can separate me from the love of God. Tribulation, peril, nakedness, a sword. No, in all of these things, I'm more than a conqueror through the one who loved me. That's, that's reason enough to get back to him because my victory is guaranteed because of his love for me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my victory is guaranteed because of his love for me. I'm trying to make it through this, y'all. Ephesians 2 and 4 said, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he has loved us. See, see. Sometimes just go through the Bible and read about where he loved us. Because then we get a perspective that we haven't dealt with much. And you know, one of the things I heard people do a lot of times when, when they feel guilty or they've gone through something, they begin to declare their love for the Lord. And that's wonderful. Even the psalmist, I think it's in Psalm. 116 said, what shall I render to him for all of his benefits, for all of his goodness, for all of what he has done for me? And you know what his conclusion was? He said, what shall I render? His answer was, I'm going to take. I'm going to take the cup of salvation. In other words, he's saying, the only way I can render the right thing to him is I got to receive what he gave me. See, see what, what worships God, what gives him the glory, what honors him is when you receive the love that he has given you. Now, when you receive the love that he has given you, what it should do is cause you to reciprocate and give back to him out of what he has given to you. 
So 1 John says, listen, brothers and sisters, God is love, and love is of God. Meaning, this love did not originate with you. It started with him. So he says, I'm giving you my love because you can't love without my love and you sure can't love your neighbor on your love because your love is selfish, hedonistic, pleasure-seeking, and you have to get something. So I remember we were at uh, Dr. Miles Monroe's birthday party one year, and uh, so when they, they brought the cake and they cut the cake and gave it to him, he stood there, his wife stood next to him, and uh, they cut the cake, gave it to him, and, said, and somebody said, Dr. Monroe, give it to the one you love the most. And so he took the cake, looked at his wife, and ate the cake. And folk were like, oh, wow. But he did something biblical. The scripture says, love your neighbor the way you love you. So you got to really love you in order to love your neighbor. What we see in, in society is a reflection of people who don't love themselves so they can't love their neighbor because they still dealing with self issues. They got issues with their mama, issues with their daddy, issues because daddy wasn't there, mama wasn't there, somebody didn't call, somebody didn't check on me. You still got unresolved issues and conflict, so you don't even love yourself. You still mad at you because you let that person do what they did to you. You didn't take care of such and such. You haven't loved yourself. And listen, when you don't love yourself, saints, hear me out. When you can't love yourself, it means that you are rejecting his love. If love is of God and I can't love me, I'm rejecting his love from coming through me. It ain't going to help me because I'm telling him, no, I don't love me. And anybody who lives on that street, your life right now is miserable. And you got the audacity to blame God. God, why don't this? God, why don't that? God is just waiting. Say, listen, listen. You asking me questions, but you don't realize you left me. And what you going through is because you left me. The scripture talks about the husband uh, loving his wife as Christ loved the church. It's kind of like he, he is, is two Greek words, hupotasso and hupokoo. Uh, one has to do with lining oneself under. And we gave an analogy of a man walking out in the rain. And as he walked out in the rain, he has an umbrella. And so if he loves himself, then he's going to take that umbrella and protect himself. And if he's loving his wife, then he ain't going to tell her to walk outside of the covering. He's going to put her under the umbrella, umbrella, Ella, Ella. Okay. <laughs> you got the picture. You got the picture. And so if I love like he loves and I receive his love and I come back to his love, then I can hold that umbrella over somebody else. But if I haven't got it, then I'm going to be mean to folk that I want to be mean to, nice to the ones I want to be nice to. I'm going to talk about people behind their back and lie in their face and say, it wasn't me. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Saints, saints, 
we got to do better. And we cannot do better if we don't take our love back. And see, the idea when it says that you have left, it's not that, that, that the person just accidentally walked away. This was a departure. This was saying, I don't want to. It was saying, I'm turning away from it. So, so, so this idea behind you have left denotes a voluntary release of something. In other words, I'm letting him go because of what I want to do or what I don't want to do. So, even though the church at Ephesus was committed to Christ, you could see it in their works. But they got so caught up in doing stuff for Christ that their heart was far from Christ. I mean no disrespect to anyone when I say this, that there are a lot of people who are in the church and it's good that you are. You may be singing in the choir, you may be ushering, you may be doing any kind of function, you could be a minister, a deacon, you could be an officer, all of that kind of stuff and doing all of the wonderful things that help touch people's lives and your heart not really belong to the Lord. I've seen people get offended because their name didn't get called for what they did. Well, basically, uh, it's not supposed to. You know, the scripture says, I, I believe it's in the Gospel of John, where it says, when, when you've done the thing that you do, just understand it was your duty. So when, when, when you help somebody, you were supposed to. When, when you love somebody that's hating you, you're supposed to. When, when you decide to give somebody money that can't pay you back, you're supposed to. If, if you haven't done anything amazing, why? Because that's the love that you receive. He gave you something and you still can't pay it back. Who, who here has been able to pay mercy back? I, I, I can't pay him back for the mercy that I have received. And that mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. I don't even have $20 that's from everlasting to everlasting. I can't pay him for the grace that I have received. I, I can't give him nothing for the unmerited favor that he put on my life. I can't pay him for the doors that he opened for me when I didn't deserve the door to be open. I can't pay him for forgiving my sins, washing my sins away. I can't pay him back. So all I can do is give him my love. All I can do is love him and love him and love him and just keep receiving his love and thank him for the love he has given to me. That's, that's, that's what he wants. That's why the songwriter sat down one day and said, there's a name that I love to hear. I love to sing his word. It, it, it sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on it all. How I love Jesus. But he just doesn't talk about how he loves. He recognizes something. What does it say? Because he first loved me. Look at your neighbor and say, it's because he loved me first. I'm not that great, I'm not that good, I'm not that awesome, but it's because he loved me first. I can't help nobody, I can't strengthen nobody, it's because he loved me first. And if he hadn't loved me first, I would be a total... I'd be messed up, jacked up, I'd be a complete wreck if he hadn't loved us first. Hallelujah. 
1 John 4.10 says, Here in love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. He, not that we loved him. That's why the angels raised that question. Psalm 8. What is man that, that you're mindful of him? And, and, and the son of man that you even visit angels in, in my mind are asking God, what, what is this thing? That, that, that man, what? I mean, we're beings that you created. We are celestials. We, 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 we know that we are like you. We, we do stuff, but what is this? This piece of clay. This, this junk, this, this, this thing that you made out of dirt that acts like dirt, that stays in dirt, messing around with dirt. It eats dirt. And when it dies, it's going back to dirt. What is, what is man? Why are you so concerned about him? As a matter of fact, you made him a little lower than L, than yourself. And not only did you make him lower, you crowned him. God. The angels couldn't understand it. They, they could not fathom his love for his creation. So the word said, behold, what manner of love the Father has given us that we might be called the sons of God. And 1 John went on to say, when we see him, we're going to be like him. You, you, what you see now is not the complete picture. So, so my brothers and sisters, let's not play with our love. You know, they call that person a player. Look at your neighbor. That's all. That's all. I ain't going to say nothing else. Just <laughs> I ain't going to say nothing else. <laughs> he says, you have ignored. You've walked away from intentionally your first love. So what happens when you leave your first love? They're no longer your priority. What, what, what they were, they're not anymore. Not your priority. And I realized that through the pandemic, some things were proven and that there were a lot of believers who left their first love when the pandemic came. And now you can't even get them to come back to join in with their brothers and sisters. Why? Because long before the pandemic, they had already left their first love. And because they left, it's hard to try to, quote, convince somebody. Listen, when something is your priority, don't nobody have to convince you about it. Can I get a witness? If, 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 if eating steak and potatoes is a priority for you, ain't nobody got to beg you. Give me a gift card. <laughs> Send me to a steakhouse or cook it if you know how to cook. You ain't got to, you don't have to, because if it's one of my priorities, I'm going to eat it. If you want a diet, you, <laughs> you going to eat it. Because don't nobody have to force you to do what is your priority. When you have left your first love, his worship is not a priority. It, it, it don't stack up to, to other stuff. It, it just doesn't. It just won't rank high in the priorities. So because it's not a priority, praying ain't a priority. Because praying is talking to him. If he's not a priority, I don't need to talk to him. Ooh, y'all getting quiet on me up in here. It's, it's, it's not necessary. I ain't got to pray every day. He knows my heart. 
Yeah, okay. So you don't have to go to work every day. Tell your supervisor. You know my... <laughs> you know my heart. You know I want to be there. But I, I identify as invisible. <laughs> Some of y'all will get that on your way home. Because people are identifying as various things now. You know, identifying as transgender. All this. You're telling your boss, I identify as invisible. <laughs> so I'm there when you don't see me. <laughs> Let me move. If he's not a priority, then being there sometimes, any time I feel like showing up, he ought to be satisfied because he ain't my priority. But you show up with your partners. You show up with your friends. You, you show up at different other venues and stuff like that with people who don't care, with people who are holding stuff against you, people who haven't forgiven you. People, if you say something the wrong way, even if they've been your friend for 15 years, will cut you off because you make them your priority. If, if, if when you leave your first love, he's no longer your priority. Then he's not your passion. It's, it's, you're not passionate about it anymore. You know, so, so if there's no passion, that means your heart's not there. You're just not that into him. Ooh. Then you like more the idea of him than you really do love him. You used to talk to him. He says, you, you left your first love, so, so repent, get back. You used to talk to him. You used to sing to him. Even those of you who can't sing, you made a joyful noise walking around the house. The vacuum cleaner didn't mind you singing while you were pushing it. Them dishes didn't complain. You just went on and sang out of key, across key, over key, through keys. You, you, why? Because your love was connected. See, when, 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 when the love is back, you don't mind making yourself a fool for that one you love. He's saying, you used to ask me after you did what you did. But when you come back to me, you start asking me before you do what you do. He says, come, come, come back. Come, come back to your love. See, you used to say thank you to him when he hadn't done anything. Now you got to the place that the only time you start saying thank you is after he's done something. Oh, I'm talking to somebody up in here. Because some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You used to get up in the morning and just say thank you, Lord. Sometimes you just be driving down the street and you, nothing else going on. Ain't no car cutting you off. Ain't no accident in front of you. But something wells up in your spirit and you just say thank you, Lord. How many of you ever been in the car sitting up at work and tears just start flowing out of your eyes? Not because of what you were going through, but because you were thinking about the goodness of the Lord in your life. And you just started worshiping. You just started crying. And you were thanking him and he hadn't done anything. What's wrong with us that the only time we can really worship, the only time we can really praise is when we done got something. We need to know how to praise him if it ain't no fruit in the, in the house. Ain't no food in the house. Ain't no bread on the table. Ain't no friends got my back. We need to learn how to praise him when ain't nothing going right. But to learn how to say hallelujah anyhow. When you get your love back, 
Then you start romancing your love all over again, and you just start telling your love how much you thank them for loving you. Don't get caught up in telling your love how much you love them. Just say, oh, thank you for loving me in my ugliness. Thank you for loving me in my waywardness. Thank you for loving me in my disobedience. Thank you for loving me when I didn't care. Thank you for loving me when I wanted to quit. Thank you for loving me when I was ready to throw in the towel. Thank you for loving me. Anybody know what I'm talking about up in here? He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to, listen, he didn't have to do it. But he did. I thank Andre Crouch for that song. He said, I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why he cared. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. Oh, but I'm glad. Anybody up in here glad? So glad that he did. So glad. So glad. Y'all excuse me. I'm just being over, overwhelmed by his love right now. I almost can't finish this today. But I feel his love flowing in this house right now. Somebody in here, you ready to give up, give in. But you just need to start thanking him for loving you. Get back to your love. Get back to loving him. Get back to your love and understand that he loved you in spite of you. He loved you. Oh, thank you, Lord. And so, I said, Spirit of God, open my eyes. Help me to see this. And then he took me to Mark. And Mark says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And then it says, this is the first commandment. So it's saying, if, if you get back to your love, that everything hinges right there. Your breakthrough, your miracles, your doors opening, your healing, your, it goes back to your love relationship. You need to get hooked up again. And guess what? He's still where he's always been. I told a story some years ago about an older couple driving in their car down the street. And in front of them, there was a young couple. They were driving slow, holding up the traffic and all that kind of stuff. And the old man's wife looked over and said, oh, look, that's why they're driving so slow. It's a young couple, and she's all up on him. And she looked at her husband and said, why don't you do that? We don't do that anymore. And he looked at her and said, I have moved. <laughs> Here, I'm still behind the wheel. You, you ain't on the hump. Yeah, some of y'all know that. <laughs> And, and that's where it is with some people right now. You're asking God, why this and why that? God is saying, I ain't moved. I, I'm still where I've always been. I, I'm right here. He was there all the time. He's waiting patiently in life. He was there all the time. He's waiting on you to get back over to him. Scripture says, draw near to God. And he'll draw near to you. So, the evidence that you repented and back is that love that he has for you will prompt quick obedience. Because he loves me, I obey him. Not because he's going to get me. How, how, many, how many of you done threaten your children that you were going to get them if they didn't obey? They didn't obey. You got them. And it didn't change nothing. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? And you're still trying to figure out what's the other formula? 
what, what, what's the other formula? What, so so, so what, what the child needs to understand is that you're not trying to get them to love you. You missed it, you missed it, you missed it. You're not trying to get your child to love you. You want your child to understand how much you love them. And, and, and sometimes that means I'm not going to rescue you out of your mess. You, I'm, I'm here, but what I am going to do is while you're in the midst of it, I'm going to keep watching over you. I, I, I'm only going to let it go so far. I still see you. I still know where you are. That's why when the prodigal son went to the far country, the scripture lets us know that the father kept looking for him. He, he loved him so much that he kept looking for him. So, so you want your child to know how much you love them, even when it means I can't bail you out of jail this time. I can't pay your rent this time. <laughs> uh -huh. I, 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 can't, I can't do it. Not that I don't have it, but I am under a divine mandate to teach you about true love. And the only way I can teach you about true love is God got to show you the love that the Father has toward me. And there were times in my life when I went contrary to the Father that he didn't bail me out. Somebody know what I'm talking about. He didn't fix it for me. He didn't turn my situation around. I had to go through what I was going through and come out of it believing that in spite of what I went through, he loved me. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? We get back to our love. Then we can love others. See, if you haven't gotten the love between you and God right, you're going to have a hard time trying to love anybody else, even if it's your spouse and your children. Got to get that taken care of first. Because I don't have the love. I ain't got enough. I need an unlimited supply. And the only way I can get it is I got to go to the source of love. And First John says... God is love. So you can't let you can't let other stuff push your love aside. We can get busy. We can start doing a whole lot of stuff. We can start coaching, participating in sports. I got to stop. I got to shut this down. One of the things the enemy is doing with our children is helping them to love everything else and not know the love that God has for them. The only way they're going to know about God's love for them is through you. If, if, if they don't learn it through you, I can guarantee you the world ain't going to teach them. And you can pray for somebody to come and disciple them. You can, you can pray and God can do it, but that's not his plan. His plan is for you. Thank God for mentors and people who disciple, who stand in the gap and do it. Praise God for that. But God's plan, mama, God's plan, daddy, is to do it through you. Okay, well, let me, let me shut this down. He told the church, I got this against you because you left your first love. But the latter part of the verse simply says, but you can come back. Remember where you were when you first came to love. 
Remember how you acted when you realized that he loved you. Some, some of you just started crying when you remembered how much he loved you. Some, some of you danced before him when you started thinking about how much. He says, remember where you fell from. Repent. In other words, turn around. Just, just, just turn around. He didn't say make penance, which is what our mindset says. We got to do something to fix it. He said, no, turn around. If you were coming to Union today, and you're coming from Highway 67, and you pass the church, you don't need to do penance. Just turn around. You, you don't have to pay money. Just Turn around. You don't have to dial 911. Just turn around. You don't have to force nobody to do nothing. You, you can even look in your rearview mirror and see what you missed. And all you got to do, turn around. And then when you turn around, do what you did at first. And some, when you first uh, came to receive his love for you, you couldn't beat you getting to church. Could, could, you were here sometime on the parking lot. And, and then when church was out, you lingered around just to touch and talk to the saints. And now when church is out, We out of here running over his shit, blowing the horn. I was at the exit before you, you know, all, that, all of this didn't happen. It goes back to the fact that we might be doing good things, but we left the first thing, his love for us. And the more we re-engage in recognizing, receiving, and worshiping, him for his love for us then we can love others Kim I don't know if you can get it up there but uh, Revelation this passage in Revelation in the New Living Translation in, in the NLT um, he says he says verse 4 but I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look at how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. But if you don't repent, I'll come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. He says, if, if you don't, then you're going to lose your source of light. Anybody who has left their first love and is not walking in that is not walking in the light. The lampstand is gone. And you don't realize because all of us know the longer you stay in the dark, the more your eyes will adjust to the darkness and you figure you can see pretty good in the dark and think that you got enough light first John and I'm done first John chapter 1 says this this then is the message which you have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That light is only possible by your love connection. So today, this is a message of admonition, not a message of condemnation. 
it's a message of admonition. Maybe, maybe somewhere you you see that. Okay, yeah, I I did leave him when I was trying to get that promotion. I I I left him. I I didn't want him to be involved at that level. Maybe it was that relationship that you pursued. Maybe it was something else. Maybe it was just in your own decisions about your money, how you handle your money. Maybe, maybe you just said, Lord, you understand. I, I can't pay tithe because you understand. And so uh, you, you, you understand, Lord. You know, it's, it is what it is, you know. <laughs> maybe you sense where you may have left your first love. Maybe you're saying, Pastor, today I'm, I'm, I'm convinced and convicted of the truth that you shared today. And I realize that God is calling me to a higher, deeper relationship. And it's my responsibility to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. My husband can't do it for me. My children can't do it for me. I got to do it. My mama can't go to church for me. My, my cousin can't go to church. I got to do it. And as long as I keep fighting against it, I'm telling God, listen, I don't even love me as much as you love me. You think your sin can make God turn his face against you? No. No. You, you don't know who you're sitting next to. You, you don't know that story. <laughs> you don't know that track record. So, you, you think you were bad. Somebody did more than you did. And if they didn't do more than you did, they did something you didn't do. But we all in the same boat. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So it, it, it don't matter. Ain't nobody left out of it. Paul didn't say, y'all have sinned. He said, all. So it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what your position or role or anything. You can come back. Get your love back. I want to invite everybody to stay in. In the parable of the sower, it talks about seed being thrown on the ground and different scenarios and what it meant. There's one place in there where it talks about the seed that was thrown on the ground and the, the weeds grew up and choked it out. And, and literally, when Jesus gave the interpretation, he was saying that the cares of life grew up and choked out the seed. That's what the enemy is trying to do to get you to back away from your love. The cares of this life, y'all, can grow up so much and you get so caught up in dealing with all of the cares of life, of this, of that, and handling this and handling that. It's just, and after a while, it's like choking out your relationship. It, it chokes out your time. You, you, you can't find time to pray. You can't find time to read the scripture. You can't find time for personal worship. You're tired when you get home. You're tired when you get up. You're tired at work. You're tired of being tired at work, so you get home to try to rest from being tired, and you're too tired to rest. Now you can't go to sleep because you're too tired to sleep. Then you finally go to sleep, and it's time to get up, and you're tired because you didn't get no rest. All of that just begins to choke it out. My prayer today is that this seed fell on good soil. And if it didn't, I'm praying that God will break up the fallow ground, that hard ground so that, that the seed of the word can get in and your passion will come back. Your, your passion to, to, to just read his word. I don't know where I'm going to start. That's fine. Just pick it up. And just start reading. Just pick a book and say, Lord, speak to me. Heads about. Father, we come to you today.
thanking you for what we have received today. We believe that you're calling us to a, a higher place in our relationship with you, and that's our responsibility that we would follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and respond to what we have received today. So today, Lord, some stand and repenting right now. Hearts are repenting for straying away, for backsliding, for, for turning away from, for letting our passion go out. We've been running on empty, running on fumes, and, and, and it's hard sometimes when we're running on fumes to even lift our hands in praise. We, we've been running on fumes and, and, and we need you, Lord. We miss the passionate relationship we had with you. And in some ways, we've allowed our worldly concerns and stuff to get in the way. So, so we acknowledge that we've done it. We acknowledge. So we repent. We turn around and we thank you for your forgiveness. So now that we're free, Lord, we reclaim what we lost. We reclaim our fellowship. We reclaim the love that we surrendered so we can move forward in you, with you, through you to obtain what you have for us. Today, we lay hold of a new commitment that we believe results in a renewed relationship with you. So we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in the immaculate, glorious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray and we thank you. Come on, let's lift our hands before him and just worship him for first loving us. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way that's why I praise you I lift you up I magnify your name come on say that's why that's why my heart is filled with praise oh I love you I love you I love you
such a special way That's why I praise you I lift you up you continue to stand and worship there might be somebody here the spirit of the lord is leading you to become a part of the union church family maybe today you gonna come back to the lord maybe you strayed away maybe hurt maybe something caused you to lose your love maybe today is the day you come back the invitation is extended you can come today one of our ministers will share with you faith counselor will share with you. Maybe you're just here and you want somebody to pray with you, pray for you. They'll do that right now. So anyone who will come today, you can come right now. So why my heart is filled with oh. Now, Lord, we thank you for your word. Your word is truth. So we don't receive condemnation from the enemy as we receive this word. But we receive the conviction of truth that comes through your word. Not to bring us down, but to edify, to build up the body of Christ. That we may see the manifestations of your power, your greatness in our lives. So we're running back to you because we're taking our love back. Not going to let anything else get in the way. We're taking our love back. Thank you for being right there as you always have. We magnify you, we glorify you, and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Thank you. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. God bless you. God bless you. I really wasn't trying to say anything, but pastors preached such a mighty good word this morning that sometimes you just need a witness to what God has done and what he's saying. And as he was talking about God loving us, and I'm thinking about God loving me, and I'm telling you something. You know, sometimes we keep looking at ourselves, but when you see how much God loves you, when you know that God loves you, when you know that it does not matter what you've done, what you're doing, in the midst of what you're doing, God says, I love you so much, nothing can separate you from my love, nothing. And I think about my life, that's why I get happy sometimes, because I think about my life over the years, and every now and then we keep sticking on before Christ, but I'm talking about after Christ comes into your life. That's what I'm talking about, because see, we'll say, well, that was before Christ, that was natural, that's what you do. But how many of us know that God loves us after Christ and we messed up? 
I'm talking about when you slept with somebody that was not your wife, that was not your husband, but he did not stop loving you. When you were still in the car smoking weed and you know you shouldn't have been doing it and you walked in the church and you hoped that nobody smelled you, but he never stopped loving you. It made me wonder how can you not begin to cry because you know, you know you are not fit. You know you are not fit. But he said in spite of all that, I'm giving you my love. And then I didn't take my spirit back away from you, but I'm loving you through it. So this morning, I just wanted to witness to what Pastor said. I can't help it. That's why I get over there. And I'm y'all, y'all, this woman always silent. That's because when I think about God loving me, and Lord, what a mess I would be if he had not continued to love me. Amen. The song that says, oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you and me. So the right response that he's looking for is a reciprocation. He loves us. And you know what God does is so awesome. He gives us the love to love him with. We, we don't have to try to manufacture some love to give. He, he gives us the love to love him with. I, I'm, I'm just having chills right now, so, so I'm going to stop before y'all start getting mad at me. <laughs> I'm just sorry, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Anybody ever had an oppressive dream that in the middle of your sleep you felt like there was a presence coming against you in your sleep? And, and in your sleep, the Spirit of God rescued you, <laughs> brought you out of it. You just said, thank you, Lord. Anybody got to thank you, Lord, here right now? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Whew. Okay. I'm not through. I just had to quit. I, I just had, because it's still preaching on the inside of me. God bless you. Thank you for your presence today. Uh, you know how we give. And uh, you can give here, you can give online. Right now, I want to turn your attention to the screens as we're going to hear our announcements. And I think I got a couple of people who need to make an emphasis on the announcements. So after this, you make your way this way.
All right. Thank you so much for the soundtrack. Hey Amen. I don't know. Oh, that's all I can say. I don't know. But we got three very talented individuals over here on the instruments. Hey Amen. Y'all notice Jeremiah got on a suit today? Hey Amen. All right. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. All right. Uh, somebody's supposed to make an announcement, right? Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, child, we're waiting on you. <laughs> All right, while Pat is making her way this way, uh, thank you, brother, appreciate that. Look at, give this man a hand. Did, did y'all see him run? Boy, I am so proud. Come here, let me give you a hug for that, man. <laughs> Man, that was good. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. Are oh, you going to hold it? Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is from the All Saint Eve, Eve announcement. Check, check, check. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Greetings from the Children's Ministry. Um, all, the Saint, all Saints Eve's community event is approaching fast. The date will be on October the 28, 2023. The time is at 4.30 to 6. If you would like to decorate your vehicles in a non-scary decorated feeling with the trunks of candy, the trunks of candy, we would love for you to join us. We are asking everyone to donate two bags of candy through October the 15th through October the 22nd. A bin will be placed outside the foyer next Sunday on October the 15th. There's lots to do. If you would like to assist in helping with the event, there will be a sign-up table in the foyer. Lastly, don't, don't forget to dress up in a non-scary costume. You can dress up as a Bible character, superhero, or cartoon. cartoon. But please, nothing scary. I'm very excited about the event. Thanks, everyone, for your help and your support. Sister Cherie and the All Saints Eve Committee. Let me see that. <laughs> now let me interpret what she just said. Y'all, we're going to have a fun night for our kids at the church. We don't do Halloween. We're going to do All Saints Eve, and we're having a trunk or treat. Trunk or treat is when people come and load candy and stuff in their trunk. You decorate your car and all that kind of stuff, ribbons, signs, and stuff like that. And you can dress up in a biblical, non-scary costume. You can be Minnie Mouse, Mickey Mouse, or you can be Donald the Duck, or just don't be Donald the Trump. Don't be that one. We don't want nothing evil or wicked. I'm sorry, Keith. But uh, that's what's going on now. In the meantime, Anybody can do it, just need to see Sister Cherie or see Sister Pat to let them know that you're willing to use your car to put some candy goods in your trunk, and then it's going to be a fun night with all kind of amusement, stuff like that, out on the parking for our kids from 4.30 to 6 here on the lot. Now, if you'd like to use your car, participate, let them know. If you want to join in with somebody else and use their trunk, let them know. But please, please, clean out your trunk. <laughs> get that stuff, vacuum it out, clean it out, get all that other stuff out of your trunk so that it can, it can be used. And in addition to that, those of you who cannot, if you would like to help provide some candies and stuff like that, then you can bring it to the church and it'll be made a place will be made available in the foyer for you to be able to put your goods in there. All right? Did I translate that okay? <laughs> I want to commend Sister Pat. I, I think this is her first announcement that she made. And so that was, that was different for her. <laughs> Amen. So thank you so much. And this is from Sister Cherie and the Children's Ministry. All right? Thank you. All right. Next Sunday... Uh, in honor of breast cancer awareness, wear your pink. It's going to be a pink Sunday, so you can wear a pink. It takes a real man. <laughs> it 
to wear pink. I don't have a pink jumpsuit. <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all remember when Jeremiah's father was here for the We Ain't Done Yet conference. Brother had on a pink suit. And, and, and Jeremiah kept it. So y'all might say, God bless you. Let's stand. Thank you so much for your presence today. I really pray that the Spirit of God give you revelation, uh, even into the Word today. Um, we don't know what we're missing when we've lost that connection. But there is an inner witness of the Holy Spirit in us who lets us know when our service has been disrupted. I believe we all know in our spirit when that connection is lost. But you have to be the one to restore the service. And it's possible. Don't cost your lot. Just remember, repent, turn around, and do what you did when you first got the hookup. Father, we thank you for your word today. May we take the word and allow it to bear fruit in our lives. We love you, but more than anything, we are so glad that you loved us. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy, the only wise God our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and forever. Let the people of God say amen. God bless you. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, YouTube. See you next week.